This is an example of something that seems difficult, but it ends up being mathematically easy. And uh, for sure, it tests your skill on being able to link parameters of a physics equation to the reality of the situation. So what we're going to do first, and I already have this written down for, for brevity, um, all of the items that were given in the original problem. So we have the coefficient of static friction. We have the coefficient of kinetic friction. We have the mass of the box. We have the dimensions of the box. And what we're trying to find is the acceleration um, of the truck before the box starts to slip. So let's look at the reality of the situation. We're, doing, we're gonna be doing a Newton second law analysis on this box and the box is the prime subject. So we really, really don't care about the truck. When we look at the, block, uh, the box by itself, we're seeing that it's going to accelerate due to the friction between the box and the truck. So if the truck were to say accelerate to the right, uh, say it's speeding up, uh, speeding off after a stoplight, then the force of friction between the box and the truck is gonna cause the box to start to accelerate. When will this force of static friction not be enough in order to keep the box accelerating? So in this case, we're only looking at static friction because the question specifically asks the maximum acceleration the box can handle without slipping. So that means without having to rely on kinetic friction. So we're gonna go ahead and look at, um, since we're only dealing with one dimension, we're gonna look at the x-axis only. And we're gonna not label <clears throat> any subscripts because we're gonna look at only the x-axis anyways. So it's a one dimensional problem. So the force of, or sorry, the sum of all forces is gonna to equal to ma. A is what we're trying to find acting on the box. Uh, the only force acting on it actually ends up being the force of friction static. And that's gonna to equal to MA. Um, again, once the box slips, then we're going to go into a kinetic friction. So this static friction uh, force, which I'm gonna then write out an equation for, is only for the maximum static friction that something can handle before it goes into a kinetic friction mode. So um, for example, we're gonna go ahead and say A is equal to frictional force static divided by M, but then further breaking this down, this ends up being mu S times normal force divided by M. And this equation here is the maximum static friction that's going to be applied to the box before it breaks the chemical bonds and starts sliding. So this is the max static friction, which is what the equation or the question is asking for. Again, uh, since the box is on a horizontal flat surface, then we can say that normal force is equal to the gravitational force. Since it's not moving up or down, the two forces cancel each other out, so they have to be equal. So we can now say that acceleration is equal to mu s times gravitational force, and gravitational force is simply mg. Now we're gonna divide it by m by bringing this denominator up here. And uh, this ends up being a lot simpler. It becomes mu s times g. And if you calculate that with the given knowns, it becomes 3.8. 9.2 meters per second squared, which you could then say it's 3.9 if you follow the rules of sig figs. So this is actually um, a ridiculously easy problem if you uh, know exactly what you're talking about, what, what parameters to manipulate based on the reality of the situation. So we, we needed this, but we didn't need essentially anything else to solve this problem. That's kind of tricky.